So the first thing you're going to do is find whatever visual aid you want to use. So it's all sorts from kids doing things to animals like this to vehicles and plants. Oh, so much variety. If you wanted to, you could also grab a, something that's at your desk and you can draw that too. So here I'm just going through and picking my favorites and that's kind of important. So you can do something that you want to do. Maybe do something that looks like it'd be fun or challenging to do. Then go ahead and start drawing in the main shapes of what you see. Don't try to do details. Uh, just draw in the shapes. So here I see there's kind of an uh, oval shape for the body. And I saw that the wings were looking like triangles. I'm using my pencil lightly so that if I need to adjust something or move something around a little bit, it's really easy to erase it. Um, so I recommend using your pencil lightly, but also don't worry about making mistakes and don't erase everything that you do wrong. There's lots of things I did wrong in this drawing and I'm trying to be forgiving because it's a lot more rewarding if you don't nitpick yourself for little mistakes that you make when you do your artwork. Now the next step is doing a uh, Sharpie marker outline. This is about twice as fast as I actually did it. So I'm actually going pretty slow. So feel free to take your time. Look at the picture while you're doing it. Don't just outline what you already drew. Go ahead and check out the details because you can adjust things. You can sort of change things up just a little bit while you are adding in these beautiful details with your Sharpie marker. Now, Sharpie markers are going to be easier and work better than regular markers because then you can use your watercolors on top without them bleeding or blending into the colors you're using because most markers are water soluble and they will start to bleed as soon as they get wet. Now you'll notice with the girl I'm doing the same thing. I'm drawing in her main shapes. Instead of drawing her fingers I just drew the shape of her hand instead of drawing any kind of details in her hands uh, on the guitar, I just drew a little kind of rectangle there. Just trying to figure out where everything is in relation to everything else. I'm spending more of my time looking at the picture itself than actually what I'm drawing. It's a really nice trick that most artists who draw observationally will do. They will tell you that they spend most of their time looking at their subject itself, not at the drawing. So if you had four cookies, for example, and you were going to give the cookies to who you were looking at, you would give three cookies to the person who is sitting in front of you and only one cookie to your drawing. So you're looking at the person, looking at the person, looking at the person, ah, looking at the drawing, looking at the person, does that make sense? Anyway, maybe it's confusing, but basically just spend more of your time looking at what you're drawing. That way you can really check everything as you're going. Okay, now I'm going to start trying to add details with my Sharpie marker. Now at this point, of course, this is permanent, so you have to remember to be kind to yourself. If you make mistakes, like I am not super happy with how I did that nose, but if you make a mistake, you just have to be like, ah, oh, it's okay, I'm just learning, this is still fun, it still looks fine, and take your time. And uh, remember, I'm going twice as fast as I actually am. I sped this video up, so take your time, go slow. Now you notice that even though in the drawing with the pencil, I just had the shape of the hands. Now that I'm using my permanent marker, I am drawing in the individual digits. But because I drew the shape, the fingers are actually easier to draw because I know where they go. So that's why it's super helpful to just sketch in the shape before you try to add any kind of detail. I'm adjusting a little bit as I go with her legs, sort of noticing some things that I didn't notice before, and that's one of the nice things. I'm still spending most of my time looking at the picture itself instead of at my drawing. That's really helpful. And there I just decided not to include the strings because that seemed like it would not necessarily add to the picture. So you can choose to leave things out if you want. And then I decided to draw in the background that's in this picture. 
I drew the grass in the foreground, a little hill in the background, and those trees. One tree is far away and higher up in the picture frame. And the tree that I'm drawing right now has bigger leaves because it is closer to me. This picture, I am not going all the way over to the side because I wanted there to be enough picture in the video frame for you to see me drawing as well as the picture that I'm drawing from. But when you do this, I hope you fill the whole page all the way. Now one thing I don't actually draw a lot is vehicles, but I thought I would challenge myself and try something new and so I chose to draw this car. Now when you do cars, it's just like anything else, you're going to start with the main shape. So you can see I'm drawing in the body shape of the car that I can see and then figure out where the windows are and draw that main shape and it's sort of connected to the door so I started drawing that. And then after I got the main shape in, I started doing some more medium-sized details like the fenders and the tires. Now the reason you do that is because otherwise you'll spend tons of time on a detail and then everything won't really fit together. So you want to start with the big main shape. So I'm spending most of my time looking at this picture and only a small amount of time looking at what I'm drawing. That way I can really, really pay attention. And something that you'll notice is that when you draw things, you start to notice things about them that you had never really noticed before. It sort of helps you observe things more closely. And I find that there are paintings that I've looked at so many times, but I won't even notice something in that painting until I try to draw or paint it. It's so fun to see what you discover. And so if there's something you're really interested in knowing more about, like a flower or a toy or a car or whatever you are fascinated by, you should try to draw an observation because you will learn so much about it. Now don't forget, I am actually drawing slower than this. I've sped up the film for you, so it will be a little more interesting to watch. But I'm taking a lot more time than this, and I'm also making mistakes here or there, but forgiving myself for them as I do them. Because I'll notice and go, oh no, this is permanent marker. I can't fix it. But I just do my very best and then try to forgive myself for my mistakes because it still looks okay. The problem is if you are mad at yourself for every mistake you make, you never finish it. I noticed mistakes that I was making in this car. And if I didn't forgive myself for those mistakes, I would have stopped doing the artwork and I would never have finished it. And now that I'm done, I'll look at it and go, well, I don't even hardly notice those mistakes. But when you're making something, sometimes that's all you see. So just cut yourself some slack. Be nice to yourself. Don't worry too much, okay? All right, now it's time to add color. So I'm adding water to each of the dishes in my watercolor dish. And I'm going to find my picture and figure out which color to start with. I'm going to start with red. I'm going to add a ton of water so it's more of a pink color. I'm mixing that in the palette above the color dishes. You'll see in a minute. So I'm just doing a light layer with tons of water. If I want to make it darker, I can come back and do a second layer once the first layer has dried a little bit. It's much smarter to do it that way than to do really thick, dark color because you can always add more color, but it's hard to take watercolor color away. So just do thin layers and then you can just be patient and do several of them. So you see how I'm adding the second layer here and it's getting darker, but it's not sticky or thick. I'm not picking up clumps of color. It's very translucent. Now here you can see where I'm mixing the colors. And the black is not as dark as it could be. I added plenty of water to this. So I'll do another layer if I want to make it darker. So I'm adding more water to this to make it a really light gray so I can do some shading. So if you want to make it gray, just add tons of water to black. So 
So I've let this dry a little bit because you don't want to do it when it's still wet. And now I'm mixing for a nice green-blue color. I've actually mixed a little tiny bit of brown in there to make it less of a bright color so it looks more like the background. So it's got a few different colors in it. And it's fun to kind of play with color mixing and see what you get like that. Now I'm using a lot of water. So I'm just kind of using the tip of the paintbrush. I'm not using, I'm not smushing anything down. I'm being very, very gentle with the water. Just kind of moving the water around. The water with a little bit of watercolor paint in it. Just a little bit of pigment. Now here I've done a very similar color. And then below I'm going to look to add a little bit more yellow into it. So I'm mixing the same color with a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, and now I'm gonna mix a little bit more yellow in there. Notice I wash the brush in between so that that yellow stays beautiful. Do you see how pure that yellow color is? Because I washed my brush before I put my brush in it. So that is how we keep our colors clean. So I'm going to do this until I'm finished. Now you kind of have to go a little bit fast when you're doing things like this so they blend together. Now I wanted to get rid of a little bit of this pigment, so I grabbed a tissue and just sort of gently dabbed it. Wipe up your space. And you missed me putting in this dark brown. It was just brown mixed with black, and I left a little white area for the sun reflection. Now I've mixed kind of an orangey-yellow color to do the color of the car. I'm gently putting that in there. And now I've mixed some black for the shadows. And go in and find the darkest areas and put a little bit of black there. And now I'm going to mix a ton of water into that black to make a gray to do the tires and some of the chrome which is like the, another word for metal, basically, on a car. Now I decided to do the cast shadow on the ground. I wasn't sure if I was going to do that at first, but then I decided why not. So that's something I noticed in the picture, and I decided to make it in my drawing. It'll make it look more three-dimensional. Now I'm doing the ground, but I decided to not do any other cars that are in that parking lot. So I'm using a little bit of creative license and just doing the part that I want to. All right, I'm mixing for kind of a darker green for the leaves because in the picture they looked a little darker. It looks like it might be kind of evening or morning in this picture. So the colors are just a little different than they might be in mid afternoon. Now here I notice I made a mistake. I didn't put any sky in between those two branches. So I kind of just play with it a little bit until it looks okay. And you can do that when you make mistakes. You can kind of just go wabi-sabi. Oh, I have a happy accident. I'm going to make it cool. It'll work. Some you want lots of water with your colors. If this dark brown wasn't dark enough, then I can just wait until it dries a little bit and add more color but it's harder to take color out. So you want to start with light, watered down layers. You notice her shirt is kind of a grayish color, so I used black with a little tiny bit of brown and lots of water. And then I noticed that her jeans are not just like a blue color, they're, they're like a dark blue color. So I added a little brown and a little black so that it could be more of a realistic jeans color. A little bit toned down. Right now I'm going to continue on my car. I'm going to make some sky color. Ooh, my water's dirty, so I'm going to get some clean water first. And that makes it much better. I'll have cleaner colors if I have cleaner water. So I'm just filling this in really fast with a bigger brush. And then I notice, oh, there's a little bit of blue on that metal. So I'm going to go in and add some of that. And then I notice I've missed the 
yellowish color that was supposed to be on the wheels so I added that take off a tiny bit of color with my paper towel all right next step is to mix for skin color now mixing for skin color is super hard guys so if you don't get it right do not worry too much it's a little bit of brown a little bit of yellow a little bit of pink a little bit of green even sometimes skin color is not easy so just you know do your best and uh, ask for help if you need some but basically skin is made out of a lot of different tones and so I start with one color and I'm going to then mix a darker color after I get this poor guitar is sort of a faded into it, the red faded into everything else that happens with watercolors if you don't wait until it's drier and now you can see I'm adding the darker colors to her skin to where the shade of, where the shadows are it's a little dark areas and this will start to make it look a little more three-dimensional and make her skin look a little bit more naturalistic because skin isn't one color. It's a one color with shadow and light and highlights and it's just very, uh, not a solid at all. So if you look at your hand right now, you'll see light areas and dark areas and that's what I'm talking about. And there's light and dark areas in her jeans too. So I'm coming in and adding some shade in her hair too. And now I'm going to clean my palette. Look at the mess I made. If I leave that for somebody, that means that somebody else can't use it. And it also means that it'll probably drip down into my beautiful, wonderful, amazing, clean paint. So you don't want to do that. So I'm even going to go another time, just got a little wet and cleaned up even better so that I can make it easier for the next person. Now just keep in mind that I've practiced a lot. The more you practice, the easier it gets. Yours won't look exactly like this and that's okay. I challenge you to try anyway. I think you'll have fun.